All right, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to get the 6L90 um, and Holly Terminator X working together. I'm currently using a TCM 2600 to control the uh, transmission as provided by uh, Powertrain Control Solutions. And I'm using PWM output 9 to output a PWM signal versus transmission slip. Uh, the slip is between 50 and negative 50 and I have a PWM from 100 to 0. So this is a just linear line. So when there's 0% slip, it should be about 50% duty cycle. When there's 100% slip, 100% duty cycle. Uh, the reason why this is important is because when you come over to your actual scanner, you'll see that in order to get torque management in the right location, it's actually kind of difficult because the window where you're actually trying to get torque management is right there right there, right here, not here. The reason why is during this initial point in these, in this beginning part, on say this uh, one, two shift, this is the clutch pack filling up. This is the oncoming clutch pack filling up. And then this is the actual transition between first to second gear. So I don't want to be cutting timing. I don't want to cut timing on this part here. I want to cut timing and now there's no easy way to do that with the TCU software. Um, they can do time-based shift cuts, but the problem with that is this window changes in size all the time. So you either cut timing too early, cut timing too late, it bucks, it doesn't drive good. You get the idea. You want to pull timing in the correct location. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So in order to pull timing in this location, there's one thing you have to understand. This part right here, especially if it's on in an area where there's like right here, you can see it's flat. Yeah, the reason why that's flat is um, this next gear has been commanded, but you're still in, say, second gear. So that ratio between second and third gear never changes. Therefore, the slip percentage is always going to be constant until it actually starts coming down. So I believe the third, fourth gear. Um, combination is like 25% gear reduction, something along those lines. So I don't actually activate any of my uh, graphs in the Holly. This was from earlier. I don't actually, oh, you're right, you can't scroll with the mouse there. You can see like this is all like 38%. So this would be like your uh, one, two. I don't have the gears or anything like that in here. So you just have to take my word for it. So that's like the one, two. This is the two, three, and I believe this is the three, four over here. Yeah, and you see how it's reading 23%. The numbers aren't completely accurate because of the whole, you know, not having a perfect frequency on the input setup, but that's okay. So you can see this blue line here, this blue line, uh, let's see, I'll go to style, Let me do my, Torque management, we're just gonna make this a bigger line, make it brighter. Okay, so you see this torque management line, and we'll just do RPM here. Let's get rid of TPS. You can see RPM. This is obviously it's still in gear. You can see the RPM still coming up, and then as it starts coming down for the shift, I have it pulling timing. You can see it's pulling 16 degrees of timing, and it's uh it's non-linear, and I'll show that in my, two, my 2D graph. Anyway, so that's how you do this part to get your transmission slip to work in the Holly. Uh, the TCM software can only output a ground, um, and the Holly won't just see that ground only. You still need a positive source. So I'm using a 10,000 ohm resistor. Uh, going from my battery to that input into the Holly as well. So that's going to provide the positive slope, and then that's going to get grounded out by the PCS uh, TCM2600, which from now on I'll just call the TCU or TCM interchangeably. Um, so then you get to outputs. So this is where people are going to get confused. Uh, I'll explain it later. But essentially you need... You need three major things. You need translip permissions, 
uh, and you need torque management permissions. So we need a translip permission for the upshift, which on an upshift, you're going to see a positive translip correlation. And on a downshift, you're going to see a negative translip correlation. So I have this output uh, activating. I want this to trigger on a falling. Um, let me show you in this. Even though there's like no period in time here on this upswing here, uh, before it gets to 25, this would be 25% slip. Before, it, or 33 or whatever percent slip, I think it would be 33% because of the second or third gear. But anyway, uh, before it gets there, there's that little upswing. Now, this is more than likely just the smoothing that's in the VCM scanner software. And this is pr probably just a zero to one condition. Um, but I still want to make sure it never gets triggered on that for any reason whatsoever. So I want this to only trigger on a downward slope. So what you do is you set up, and this is in the uh, Terminator X software, you have transmission slip. When it's above 22%, it's enabled, and it won't deactivate until it returns to zero. That's hysteresis mode. So as transmission slip comes up, say this is 22% here, when it hits 22%, it's going to activate that input and it's going to stay there. It will stay in this range and it will stay on as long as it's anywhere, as long as it's been triggered until it reaches zero. But in order to prevent, say this is 33%, right? The very top on that upward slope, I have to pass through that, but I also don't want anything to happen. I don't want it to start, you know, pulling timing, even if it's just for one you know, revolution or just for one cycle, I don't want it to pull timing at all. So what I do is I also make my range 22% to negative 15%. And the negative 15% is the bottom of my range that I want for my downshift, but 22% for my upshifts uh, is what I really want. So even if it's above, once it gets above 22%, it's engaged the first rule and it won't but it still won't activate because these are all or in boolean expressions these would be anded together these both have to be activated in order to output a one or in order to be triggered on so in order to um, get this to trigger on even though it's gone past one or even though it's gone past 22 and it's engaged this it needs to return back below 22 in order to engage the second part of this equation and then or the second part of this expression and then that creates your falling uh, trigger and I have the same thing essentially for my downshift my hysteresis is actually the lower part of the expression instead of the upper part of the expression it doesn't matter which way they go as long as they're as long as it says all, that would mean and, they both need to be done at the same time in order to output a one. Okay, so that's the first part of the torque management permissions. Now ignore this for a second. Here's my linked output. These are ORed together. So that means that either I have my transmission permissive up is enabled or down, which means it will only trigger on uh, a falling edge on the um, upshift or will only trigger on a rising edge to a downshift. Um, and that's where the OR statement comes from. That's why you need the OR statement here because only one of these will be enabled at a time, but you want both of them to also work. So then, oh, my bad. Okay, so then you go to your sensor input triggers. Um, these are all anded together. Uh, I just do this because I don't want torque management activating, like say I'm at a stoplight or something like that. Um, technically, you don't need any of this once you do uh, what I just showed with the, or what I just showed before. But I like having it like this because there might be a one weird little situation where you end up pulling timing at the wrong time and then you end up, you know, stalling the engine at a stoplight or something um, so I have speed above eight miles an hour 
these are all pretty much driving conditions for me or accelerating conditions. Uh, cruising, I'm usually around like 55 to 60 kPa without a tow load on it. So, I mean, that's fine. Um, and then, so these are all added together. So the way how the statement would work is tor torque permissions is enabled when all of these conditions are met and either of these two conditions are met. As long as one of those two are met, but all of these are met, torque permissions will be a one. Now when torque permissions or uh, torque management permissions becomes a one, it activates this two-dimensional table. So I made this 2D table, and I just call it torque management. It's pretty simple. And I have it um, enabled whenever torque management permissions is enabled. And that's essentially setting a very advanced condition. Like, yeah, advanced enable, yeah, that's cool. Well, I can put tons of inputs into conditions where this two-dimensional table is activated using the Holly uh, Holly's outputs. All right there. So we'll go back to that table. And I have a timing offset based on fuel flow. Consider fuel flow load in this case. There's no uh, one dimensional like load access or anything like that that you can use. Um, but fuel flow is proportional to load. So I'm using fuel flow as my load indicator. Um, and then translate percentage. And then this is where my taper comes in. So that's how I have it. I have it start really negative at first. And then as it gets closer and closer to zero, I have it filter out pretty much back to nothing. Uh, at higher load ranges, you know, 400 pounds per hour of fuel, that's going to be on boost, about 10 pounds of boost. Um, I have it phone 35 degrees of timing for a long time. And then I have it tapering back in as well. This is going to make sure that during this actual clutch engagement, when the clutches are transitioning over from, say, second gear to third gear, that there's reduced torque. So one, the shift can happen faster if it needs to, but two, you don't burn out your clutch packs. And negative 35 degrees of timing at 10 pounds of boost is almost like hitting a rev limiter. So that's good like we want that but we don't want to shut the throttle because uh, there's throttle input lag you just lost all your boost in your piping um, so it's what a lot of people do when they're running a e38 computer is they go into torque management and they have it be oh that was weird they have it be time and pull only okay so that's taken care of here and then this would be your downshift I have a downshift graph set up as well. And the reason why the downshift is there is to help limit how much the RPM rises. The way that these transmissions do their downshifts, um, there is a period in time where the transmission is essentially in neutral and it will free rev. It's not as sophisticated as a dual clutch transmission. Um, and it might take more learning for it to figure this out, but it doesn't matter. I can use this to pull um, to essentially pull out some of that RPM acceleration so when it engages on a power downshift, it doesn't flare. Okay, let's see. What else was I gonna go over? I mean, that's pretty much, oh, the shift pop. Everyone wants to know the shift pop. So these transmissions, when you have, uh, I have this other output that I made called shift pop. The way that shift pop works is as long as my, I have a boost actuator cut out, so I want to make sure I have boost in my pipes. My, thr my throttle position is still above 70% and RPM is above 5,000. You don't even need this. I could just make this a lower number and say 4,000. So as long as it's above 4,000. Now, I, I, now I like hysteresis mode better myself. I'm going to put that back. Yeah, history system mode. Um, so this will activate, uh, say you're doing a pull, uh, the transmission gets above, or the engine gets above 5,000 RPM. It'll engage this, this part of the table. Um, but sometimes what will happen is, uh, say the transmission early shifts or something along those lines and you drop below 
uh, your next gear. Now in mine, it's shifting from at like 6,000 or 6,500, and then it's dropping down to about 4,000. Um, but it all depends on torque converter slip. So if I'm running more boost, you know, it's going to be closer to 6,000 than it is if, if I have lower boost. But either way, I have it set up with this his hysteresis mode, and that works for me. And then I have a linked output. So all these conditions need to be met. And one, out, one linked output torque management permissions needs to be enabled. And then I have a timer. So then this timer starts and it will activate shift pop permissions for 0 0.005 seconds or 5 milliseconds. And the reason why we're doing 5 milliseconds is because I don't want to put too much, and we'll get into this, but this whole shift pop permissions is going to activate essentially spark cut. And that spark cut means I'm going to put a lot of air and fuel in my exhaust and I don't want it to be too much or I could end up blowing out the exhaust, destroying the uh, boost actuator cutout, turbine, whatever. So to limit myself and limit how much air and fuel I put into the exhaust system, I'm using a small delay. And you can adjust this window. The bigger, the, amount, the larger amount of time you put here, the more air and fuel you will put into your exhaust. But it is a possibility that if you put too much time here, that shift could, could occur and you could be at 0% translip before the even finishes. So it would just be an unpowered uh, upshift. And that is possible. I have my 2-3 shifting at like 80 milliseconds right now. So that window where there's a slip percentage between 22 and 0% is actually kind of small. So, where's the calculator? There we go. So say we're shifting at 6,000 RPM, because we're just going to use a simple numbers for this. 6,000 RPM. Out of those 6,000 RPMs, we have uh, four combustions per revolution. Um, so it's 24,000, and then 24,000 combustions per minute divided by 60. So that's uh, 400 revel or 400 um, combustions per second, and then we're going to turn combustions per second into seconds per combustion, doing a one over. So then that equals 2.5 milliseconds. So if I only want two cylinders worth of air and fuel for my ship pop, I'm going to use five milliseconds, which is why I'm using it. Uh, I don't want I want a pop, but I don't want a huge pop. And that's more than enough to get a good pop out of it. So with that said, I think that's it now. I think that's everything. Oh yeah, don't worry about this thing here. There's, I gotta figure out how to make this thing work. I might be able to do it with TCU input. Um, but I, I'm not really willing to cross that road yet. Figure that out. I'm just happy with how it's driving right now. But yeah, if there's any questions uh, in regards to how this works exactly, like if there's, if there's anything that's unclear, uh, feel free to leave me a comment, uh, message me, whatever. Uh, until next time, guys, I'll talk to you later.